David had a very good friend. And David was a godly young man, and David's friend was godly. Now, do you think Saul was a friend of David's? No. Saul wasn't a friend of David. Saul liked it. Saul liked some things that David did. Can you tell me some of the things that David did that Saul was glad that he did? Do you remember some things David did that Saul was happy about? Do you think Saul was happy when David killed Goliath? Yeah, he was glad. Then he didn't have to fight against Goliath, right? Do you think Saul was happy when David played music for him and helped him feel better? Yes. Do you think Saul was happy when David killed, uh, led the armies out and killed the, 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 the enemies? Yes. But do you remember some times when Saul was not happy with David? Do you remember when Saul would come back and all the people in the villages would sing about how great Saul was and how much greater David was? Was Saul happy about that? He was jealous, right? So Saul, we might say, how many of you know a person, and maybe they try to be your friend, but they're only your friend as long as you're doing something for them? Yeah? So is that a Bible kind of friend? No, that's not a godly friend. A friend who is your friend only when you're doing something for them is selfish, aren't they? So now we're talking, about, this is something that all of us can learn from, right? Because we are friends with people and we have friends. And we should, what we're going to learn about, I'm going to tell you right now what we should do with it. We should determine in our heart and in our mind that we are going to be a godly friend and we are going to try to hang around people who are godly. We're not going to have friends that are ungodly. Because our friends affect what we do. How many of you have ever been with a friend and the friend said, Hey, let's go do this. And you said, Yeah, that sounds like fun. Let's go do this. We've all done that, haven't we? So our friend got us to do something. Is that good or bad? It depends on what that thing was, doesn't it? How many of you? Now let's be honest. How many of you have been with a friend and your friend said, hey, let's go do this, and you knew it wasn't the right thing to do, but it sounded like it was fun, and so you did it. How many of you were with a friend and the friend said, hey, let's go do this, and you knew it was okay to do, and you would enjoy it, and you did it. So we've all done that, right? Our friends, often, they affect what we do. Or we affect what our friends do. We influence, right? Our friends will influence us to do good or bad. So what kind of friends should we have? We should have godly friends, right? We should have friends who are going to, as much as they can, help us do what's right. And we should make sure we are the kind of friend that will help others do what's right. Now, David's friend, Saul was not his friend, but David had a friend who was very, it's kind of surprising that this other man, young man, would be David's friend. So, Raylan? David, well, so, Saul had four sons. He had four sons, and Saul was the king. So which one of Saul's four sons would be the next king? Which one? Number one, number two, number three, number four. The oldest one, the second, what do you think? Who do you think would be the next king? Number one. Number one, the oldest son, right? And Saul's oldest son's name was Jonathan. 
Jonathan was old enough to be a fighter, a soldier. Several weeks ago, remember, Jonathan and his armor bearer went just the two of them against a whole garrison of Philistines, and God fought for them and gave them the victory. Do you remember that? And, and then, um, so Jonathan was at the, at the big valley where the giant was last week. And Jonathan saw David fight against the Philistine. And when he saw that, he had known David had been in the palace, so he knew who David was, and he had seen how David acted, and he thought, I want to be friends with David. David loves God. David loves our country. David is brave and courageous, and I want to have that kind of person as my friend. Now, so Jonathan was the king's son. He was special. And David, at this point, we know that David was special because we read the Bible. But nobody else knew. All that everybody else knew was that David was a shepherd. David was out in the field and he would follow sheep around. And then he was brave. But Jonathan knew that, and he didn't care whether David was famous or powerful or rich, all he cared about was the type of person David was. Sometimes we want to hang around somebody because they have money, right? But not Jonathan. He wanted to be around David because David was honest, and he was trustworthy, and he was brave, and he was humble. And so Jonathan came to David one day and said, we have, you know, they... We, we have such a great friendship. I want to be, I want us to have an even stronger friendship. And so, I want you to have my princely robe and my armor. I want you to have that. So Jonathan gave David something very important to him to show that he was David's friend. Well, remember what Saul thought about David. He liked the things David did for him, but Saul was jealous, wasn't he? Saul was envious. He thought, David's going to steal the kingdom from me. And all the people loved and praised David, and Saul said, that praise should be mine. And so Saul decided, he said, no, 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 this. We, David is going to try to steal the kingdom from me. And he told his servants and the people in the palace, that David had to die. He was the king. What well, his servants would probably obey him. Now, sometimes they didn't, but they might think, well, that's what the king said. Maybe, uh, maybe I don't know something about David. And so Jonathan heard that, and Jonathan said, no, we can't do that. And Jonathan went to his dad. There's Jonathan talking to King Saul. And Jonathan went to his dad and said, dad, you don't want to have David be killed. David is innocent. David loves our country. David loves you. You don't want to make it so that his innocent blood is on your hands. There's no reason to kill David. And Saul said, oh, I guess you're right. I will make sure that, he's, that I, no one follows through on that command. And so Jonathan took his friend back into the palace where he would play his heart and do work for the king, and David was safe for a while. Well, time went on, and one day, you know, in Saul's head, he could not get rid of evil thoughts about David. David would go out to battle with a bunch of soldiers and come back with another victory, and Saul would say, he's just He's going to just take over. People are going to love him more than they love me. And he would get those thoughts in his head and he wouldn't drive them out. He'd keep thinking evil things and says, i got to get rid of David somehow. But time went on and those thoughts got worse and worse. And when an especially evil spirit came over Saul, what would they do? What would they do to help the evil spirit go away from Saul? Do you remember? What's that? Play music. Right. The music would calm Saul down. And who played the music for Saul? 
Not his son. David. David did. David played the music for Saul. And so there was one time David was playing the music on his harp. And the evil thoughts kept running around in Saul's head. And he got angrier and angrier and angrier. And what did he do? He grabbed the spear next to him. And he flung it at David. And David out of the dodged and he missed the spear that was coming at his head. He ran out. He came back a little bit later. Things got better. And another time he was playing his harp for Saul and Saul's evil thoughts. His mind, he kept rolling around those evil thoughts in his head. And pretty soon he was so angry and so hateful toward David that he grabbed his spear and he flung it at David and David is and ran home. Now you might not remember this, but I think last week we said when he went home, who was David's wife? Remember who David's wife was? Michael. And who was Michael? Saul's daughter. Right. So he went home and he's married to Saul's daughter. His best friend is Saul's son. Right. And he went home and, and he told Michael, says, I don't know what I, can, should, what I can do. I don't think I can go back in the palace. Your father has tried to kill me twice. And Michael looked out the window and she looked down in the street and there was some men from Saul's armies. And she said to David, she said, David, you're going to have to get out of the house. My father's men are outside there. They're going to try to kill you. And so... She let David out the window. He snuck out the window, out the back, and he ran for his life. And then, I don't know why they had one, but then she took an idol. It must have been about this tall. And she took an idol, and she laid the idol in David's bed, and she put the covers over it, and she put some, some, some goat hair up by where his head would be so it looked like his head. And she just let that be there. And in the morning... The men knocked on the door, bang, 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 and they said, and she went to the door and said, and they said, your father says that he wants David to come to the palace. And she said, oh, I'm so sorry. David is sick in bed, and he won't be able to come. So they went back to the palace and told Saul, David is sick in bed, and Saul was so full of hate and anger that he said, bring him in his bed. Go and just bring the whole bed here. He's going to die. And so those men, they went up into the house. They said to Michael, your father says, bring him in his bed. And so they went in to get the bed, to get David out of the bed and bring the bed. And what was in the bed? An idol. An idol. David had escaped. Now that caused some trouble later on which we don't have time to tell about. But that caused trouble. We're not done. That caused trouble. What, what do you think caused trouble there? Did Michael tell the truth? No. She didn't. And later on, that caused some trouble. But anyway, David was had escaped from Saul. Well, after a while of running around, finally he got word to Jonathan and he said to and they met up, and he said to Jonathan, Jonathan, I've been running. Your father hates me. He wants to kill me. There's no doubt in my mind. I'm probably just one step away from being killed. And Jonathan said, no way, David. My dad tells me everything that's going on in the country. And I haven't heard anything about that. There's no way that he wants to kill you. I don't think so. And David said, but you know, Jonathan... He knows that we are good friends. And he's not letting you know about this. He's letting you know about lots of other things, but he's hiding from you that he wants me to die. And Jonathan said, well, maybe, but I don't think so. What do you want me to do? And David said, listen, let's try this. Tomorrow is a big feast in the palace. It's a new month, and there'll be a three-day feast. And your father expects me, because I work in the palace, he expects me to be there at that feast. Tell your, I won't go. And tell your dad 
that my older brother said that I needed to come down to my house in Bethlehem for a yearly feast. And we'll see how your dad responds. If your dad responds nicely, then it'll be okay. But if he gets angry, we'll know. So what do you think happened? David didn't go to the feast. They were sitting there. The Bible says that Saul was sitting up against the wall and he saw all the people from the palace at the big feast. And was David in his seat? David was not there. And Saul thought, hmm, he must have had something come up. He's not here today. But the next day, everybody was there for the feast of food. And David was still not in his place, was he? And Saul said, so Jonathan, where, where is David? His seat's empty again today. And Jonathan said, oh, Dad, David asked me if he could miss. And if he could go down to Bethlehem, where his family is from, because they have an annual feast. And when Saul heard that, he was so angry. He said, you are such a stupid boy. Don't you know that that David is going to take the kingdom and you'll never be a king as long as David is alive. He needs to die. And Jonathan said, why should he die? There's no reason for him to die. And Saul took his javelin and he threw the javelin at his own son, Jonathan. He's full of hate, isn't he? And Jonathan was so upset over that, he went out into the field where he and David had determined ahead of time that they would have a special signal. He took his, uh, somebody to help him, and he was acting like he was practicing his archery. And he took his bow, and he shot an arrow, and then he shot another arrow, and then he shot another arrow, and he said, okay, go get my arrows. And as the boy went and ran, he said, no, go on further. Go farther. They're, they're out past you. And that was the special language. Because before they had said that if he says, oh, look to the right, everything would be safe. But if I say, go farther, it's not safe to stay around. And as soon as the boy had come back, Jonathan gave him his bows and arrows, and he went back into town. And David came out from hiding. He had already heard Jonathan say that. What did he know? He knew that Saul wanted to kill him, that he'd have to be on the run. As long as Saul's alive and the king, he was not safe anywhere around there. And he and Jonathan, they had promised before that they would always care for one another, that they would always care for each other's children. And they renewed that promise. They renewed that promise that no matter what happened, no matter what happened to Jonathan, David would care for him and care for his kids. If anything happened to David, Jonathan would care for him and care for his kids. They were the best friends, and they were very godly friends. They cared for each other. They trusted each other. They told each other the truth. They never lied to one another. And God blessed them with that friendship. Now, what kind of friend are you? Don't answer that with your mouth, but in your mind, what kind of friend are you? Are you a friend that always does what's right? Are you a friend that tries to get those around you to do what's right? Or do you just do whatever's fun? Sometimes doing what's right isn't fun. But God will always bless us. And be with us, even if we're in a hard case, if we are doing what's right. And you know what? We don't understand this in a physical sense because we can't see him. But the Bible says, teaches us, that Jesus can be our friend. Now, we don't, Jesus is not going to walk through the door. But in a spiritual sense, Jesus can be our friend. If we turn from our sin and believe on him, the Bible says that God gives us eternal life, which allows us to communicate with God in our mind and in our heart, and Jesus can be our friend. And that's the best friend anybody could have, isn't it? So, as we go home, as you go back to your street and your neighborhood, I want you to think about making sure